Hi, it's Vicki with Breadcrumb Cooking. We're gonna pickle some vegetables today. It's really good. It's not quite chow chow. I know that's an old, old recipe that's in the ball uh, uh, canning book. I've got one from 1970 something and it talks about chow chow. But we're gonna make a pickled cabbage that some people use as a coleslaw. But what it does is preserve that cabbage on your shelf throughout the season, plus it's really good. I don't make slaw out of mine, I eat it straight from the jar. And if you make it with a red cabbage, it's just beautiful. You may remember that on your grandmother's or your great grandmother's uh, pickle tray. When they used to have those old fashioned pickle trays, they would have this red looking stuff that probably you weren't gonna touch. <laughs> But I'm telling you, you should try it. It's really good, and that's what we're gonna do together today. So we have some background noise going on in the kitchen, but I think we can work around it. We're gonna come down to our mat, and we're going to chop cabbage and other vegetables together. So I've got an onion, a green pepper, and cabbage. You can also add carrots, and like I said, you can add red red cabbage. It makes it kind of pretty, but I'm, I'm just gonna use my green cabbage and get this going. And we're gonna water bath this for 10 minutes. So it's gonna make six to eight pints of this uh, pickled cabbage. I'm trying to get it up there. It's really kind of pretty and it tastes, it stays crunchy. That's what I wanted you to know, that this is gonna stay crunchy, believe it or not. And I will open this as we're water bathing and let you hear the crunch. So let's get started chopping and I'll be back. Okay, we've got our cabbage all chopped. I put it off into two bowls. There you go, two bowls. And I rough chopped a green pepper and I'm gonna put half of that green pepper on this bowl and the other half on the other bowl. And you can add carrot, you know, if you want. This is a sweet. I brought out my, my daughter-in-law made sauerkraut. If you love sauerkraut, this smells like heaven to you. And if you don't, or if you think you don't, maybe you haven't tried it, then it's gonna stink. <laughs> it lives up to its main name. It is sour. This is sweet. And so it has the vinegar and then the sweetness. It's truly a pickle flavor. So that's the difference between the two. Both of them will preserve your cabbage for the season. Um, whatever your taste buds want, and I like all of it. We're gonna split that onion, and I added a little piece of, another piece of onion that I had, so onion to taste, I would say, but one onion is enough. Now we're gonna take, maybe we rinse my hands. Now we're gonna take a tablespoon of salt and sprinkle over this. And those of you that bake sauerkraut, you know, this is similar. We're going to only do uh, set this off for an hour and let this salt uh, remove the uh, extra liquid out of that. Make sure I get a full tablespoon on each. You can go in with your hands or you can go in with a spoon, whatever you want to do. My bowls are really full, so I'm going to work this through with my hands and get all of this salt coated down in throughout all of this cabbage so that I can draw out some of this excess liquid. And when I have massaged this salt in throughout this whole bowl and this bowl, I'm gonna cover them and set them over for an hour and let them rest. And then we will be back and we're going to make the brine for this. All right, we've got that cabbage setting off with the salt. We're gonna let that set off for an hour. We're gonna heat up our brine, which is gonna be three cups of white distilled vinegar, 5% acidity. And you can use um, 
apple cider vinegar also if you'd like to. To that, we're gonna dissolve four and one half cups of just granulated sugar into that. So you're gonna have to heat it up enough to melt your sugar. And then you're gonna want that to go ahead and cool down. So that's why we're doing it right now. In each jar, we're gonna put, we're gonna to mix together a tablespoon of celery seed and a tablespoon of mustard seed. I'm gonna mix that together and together here in a few minutes, we're gonna put that in our jar so that we have the um, equal amount of flavor in each jar instead of putting it into this sugar mixture. So we're gonna heat this up and melt it. While that is melting that sugar, we're gonna take, this is a fourth of a teaspoon and I'm just gonna go through and equally put my spice into each jar. I'll probably do this a couple of times. But I don't want one jar that's all spiced up and another jar that's kind of bland. Uh, you can put it in with the sugar mixture when you're melting it, and that's fine. But then when you go to pour it, it's just willy-nilly. Willy-nilly. It might not be um, equally distributed that way. And this way, it is, and this will mix in as that liquid gets poured in over that cabbage. Okay, let's check our sugar mixture and see if it's almost clear now and it's not quite boiling, which I really don't wanna boil it. I just wanna melt that sugar and it's almost melted. It's kinda of like making hummingbird sugar water if you do that. It's just a matter of melting the sugar in there. And we're doing it now so that it'll cool off. And I will have this recipe in the description. We're almost done. And I'm, let's go ahead and open one of these jars. I wanted to, I told you I'd show you how crispy that this is and let's do that. So let's open one. Fork or a spoon and I'll get some of this out and see if I can if I can prove to you how crunchy. It's really, really, really got, it really holds its body well. And it, it's, if I can get it to snap, it's very crunchy. Just have to take my word for it, I guess, because you're not gonna hear it uh, crunching. But, oh, but it smells like grandma's house. You know, when, when your grandma made um, pickle relish, that's exactly, grandma's pickle relish. I mean, it smells so good and um, and obviously I love it because I'm making another batch. Um, I hope you enjoy this and we're going to finish it up and I'm going to show you uh, how it looks when it comes out of the water bath. Okay, we've let this cabbage sit. There is a little liquid down in the bottom, which we're going to leave that down in the bottom of the bowl. <laughs> I got my pasta spoon out because I don't want that liquid. I just want the cabbage. And I'm gonna spoon that over into my jar. And we're not gonna pack this down like you do when you make the sauerkraut. This is gonna go in loose and with the brine over the top, more like a pickle than, than the sauerkraut. You know, the sauerkraut that my daughter-in-law made, she packed it and kept it covered under brine. And you know the whole routine probably for sauerkraut or you can pull up a video and watch it. I am so proud of her uh, that she is learning and bringing back the old uh, ways of doing things and uh, their homesteading and just extremely proud of them doing that. You know, during World War II, cabbage, potatoes, beans, Biscuits, cornbread, and this part of our country was staple uh, for uh, nourishing the families. And we still enjoy it in our family. All of those old recipes we still enjoy. Okay, we emptied our bowl you can see there is the liquid in the bottom. And I did not rinse the salt like you do if you're making sauerkraut. I did not rinse the salt 
off of this cabbage. I actually got my two, four, six, eight jars, my eight pints filled. And I'm gonna now pour some of the brine over. I kind of like to have that brine covering up to one inch headspace. But if I don't have enough to completely cover, it's okay. It will still be all right. So don't worry about it. It's a pretty forgiving uh, recipe. We're gonna put some more cabbage in that one. The amount of vinegar in this allows us to water bath it. That's something you wanna be careful with on your recipes. When you get into canning, you'll be used to that, that the amount of acidity from the uh, vinegar versus the sugar matters. So you don't want to be um, saying, oh, I want mine sweeter, so I'm gonna put more sugar. That just doesn't work. It doesn't work that way. These are tried and proven recipes, and you can go through your bowl book and find the chow chow recipe, which is similar to this one. All right, we've debubbled, and we're gonna go back through and add some more cabbage to these, and then we'll come back and put our lids right, we've on. We've got our jars all filled with our cabbage, and I'm gonna take, I've got a some vinegar in a bowl with a paper towel, and, it, and those of you that can understand what I'm doing, this is a sugar syrup, and I don't want any of that on my lid making a false seal, so I'm gonna go around and clean that off very thoroughly while I'm making sure that my, um, my cabbage is sticking up, I'll fix that. Uh, make sure that my jars don't have any nicks, which I do that when I sterilize my jars. And I have washed my lids. And I'm gonna go through and place lids and rings. And we're gonna put this into a water bath that will cover the top of these jars by one inch. And this is a high acid food, so it's not a fear of botulism with this. You could still have a false seal and you don't wanna eat moldy food. You still wanna be careful, I'm not saying that, but you don't have to worry about botulism because it's a high acid food. Still have to follow all the rules. But the pressure's off as far as we don't have to do a pressure canning for this. There we go, let's put them in our hot water bath. Now the water in this uh, bath over here is not hot yet. Get this cabbage out of the way. It is not hot. It is a little warmer than room temperature so that I don't have to wait for it for such a long time, but it's not hot. And we're gonna place those in. All right, we're finishing off our um, hot water bath for our cabbage, our pickled cabbage and um, or you can call it coleslaw some people go ahead and take it out of the jar and add their mayonnaise and make coleslaw out of it if that's what you want to do uh, we actually are going to get 14 pints so you never know when you're chopping up fresh vegetables what you're going to get and remember i did not pack that cabbage in i wanted some air space since i am canning it i wanted it to heat up all the way through so we'll be back in a little bit and we'll show you what these look like. Now I will let these sit on the shelf for at least a week before I open them and let that, uh, all those flavors marry together very well. And then, then we can open them up and start eating on it. Okay, I was quiet so you could hear that ping. Now that's music to a canning person's ears. They've been pinging as I take them out. Um, of course, the, the little lids loosen as they cook, but they're all done. 
I'm very proud of them. There's another pink. Those of us that can, that is just such beautiful music to hear that ping and to know that we have preserved this for a year or two into the future for our families to enjoy. I hope you enjoyed this video today. If you want to know more about canning or water bath canning, there's lots of tutorials out there. As I've said previously, I'm novice to canning, but I'm starting to gain confidence in it and I'm loving it. So I hope if you're taking off on learning how to can that you'll find one of those tutorials that are mostly free and take some lessons and get your ball cookbook and your USDA canning book and go after it. So I wanna also add to all of this that this recipe uh, is what I did today. It's what I chose to do in my kitchen. I would recommend that you choose to follow USDA recommendations there's a lot of things floating around out there. If you're not comfortable with this recipe, you certainly shouldn't be doing it in your kitchen. Now, I'm not a USDA person, and so this is a disclaimer that this is just what I did. You always keep your own kitchen safe for you and your family. I hope you enjoyed this. I had a great time doing it with you today, so thank you.